All right, howdy folks. Welcome back to Modern Horrors 31 Days of Halloween with the conclusion to Wes Craven Week. Wishmaster, produced by Wes Craven and directed by Robert Kurtzman, the K from k and FX. If you're a horror fan, you know k and FX. Wishmaster. So our movie opens on some vague Middle East place, and everything is literally going to shit. Like, people are turning into snakes, their skeletons are robbing, like... Are popping out of their uh, bodies. Um, people's faces are being pulled off by medieval vacuum cleaners. I don't remember. It is just, it affects heaven right there and everybody else is hell. Um, turns out it's a genie <laughs> because that's what the movie's about. It's a genie. And uh, they captured the genie in a, uh, a gem and store it in a statue. Fast forward to mid 90s somewhere and Robert Englund is purchasing the statue, and Ted Raimi's there as well, and as they're lowering it down off the boat, um, the guy is clearly drunk, hits the thing, drops the statue, Ted Raimi dead. Sorry, Ted. And the operator picks up the gem and takes it to an auction house where we meet our main character, whose name I forget. Um, she's blonde. <laughs> I, I don't know. Our blonde. And... Turns out that this is the gem with the genie in it, and the guy who's appraising the uh, the gem at the auction house, like our chemical guy in the lab, it blows up, releases the genie, and again another amazing effects thing. And he says, and he says, I can relieve you of your pain with a wish. <laughs> and he has this great voice. Okay, so the guy says yes, and he ends his pain by killing him. Naturally. So thus begins this just onslaught of like horror icon cameos, including Tony Todd and Kane Hodd and who else? Somebody else. Was we already have Ted Raymond. We already Ted have Robert, Robert England. England. Um, there are like others though. I swear there is others. I'm pretty sure Greg Nicotero had a cameo somewhere. In so there. yeah, and there's just like and glorious like super special effects deaths, and so, well, some of them are kind of crappy, and this. This bad guy is just everything. He has this voice. All right, but that, that's getting into something else. And then we... He's taunting our main character with his sister, uh, with her sister, and um, she's trying to... Because she's in an auction house, she likes all these old things, so she's looking into it, how the genie works, and basically setting up our magic system so that she can... Figuring out how to kill him. Turns out, genies come from an alternate dimension. They're trying to get over to here so that they can take over the world. And the only way they can do that is if the person who awoke them, our main character, our blonde, um, grants three wishes of theirs. So she wastes two, like right off the bat, um, trying to figure out who he is and then getting back to her apartment. And then... We end up at this huge party held by Robert England, and again, everything goes to shit, and just everything's happening, and it's fantabulous. And she's cornered there, and we've got the the genie, and he's like speaking in this low voice, and it goes, "Fuck it, <laughs> it's just great." And then she says, "I wish that the operator hadn't been drunk that day." And we go back in time, and he's not released from his little job. Well, actually, what she says is she wishes that the guy hadn't been drinking um, that morning. So I'm actually kind of surprised that the genie didn't take that completely literally and made him, like, super, super thirsty, at which point he'd cough and do the same thing. I figured it would be... She, I thought he, she said wasn't drinking on the job. Whatever. Point is, he's back in his little hole and everything's safe again. Everybody lives the end. It was nice. Oh, and Robert Englund and Ted Raimi's still alive, and Tony Todd's still alive, and Kane Hodder's still alive, and it's wonderful. What'd you like? I like the way that the restrictions on the genie worked. Basically, in order to get into the world, he had to grant three wishes to the main character, but not three wishes total, just three wishes to her. So he could grant any number of wishes to anybody else. So he basically just goes around town goading everybody else into making stupid, vaguely worded wishes. And they don't have to say, I wish. They say things like, I'd love to see that, or 
I'd give anything to be famous or something like that. And then somehow he gets power over the uh, people who he granted wishes to so that we can have more special effects gore candy. And this movie is gore candy. The special effects in it, is, it's uh, got to be all K and B. It, it's amazing practical effects. It's glorious. Absolutely glorious. The computer effects. It was like 1997. What do you want? Yeah. So the thing I liked about this movie was I would say the genie himself as a character is fabulous. The guy who plays him is just top-notch. His voice is just wonderful. And like, there's this one part when um, he's goading Kane Hodder. Kane Hodder's playing this... Um, the security guard, and he says, well, what do you want? And Kate Hunter says, what I want right now is for you to go away. And the genie turns around slowly and goes, no, no, and he starts walking away. But, you know, then he gets his. I just love this guy. He's so, he's a perfect Wes Craven um, character, like Freddy. Um, he's over the top, everything he says is amazing, and just... I like the blue suit, too. That one's really cool, with, like, matching his blue eyes. I don't know, it's hard to kind of pick something that I really didn't like, because overall it was a very solid movie. The plot was really focused and didn't really meander too much, which Wes Craven movies, especially Wes Craven Presents movies so far, is have a tendency to do. But this was generally straight and narrow, spot on, not too many superfluous B-plots. The only thing I may have not liked was some of the circumstances were a little bit contrived and how the genie managed to goad everybody into making their wish. It's a little spoon fed. But I think that was just part of his power where he convinced people to make the wish. I think there was a little bit too many characters. For I mean, this is definitely a horror fans movie. You're going to recognize people. You're going to recognize effects. You're going to recognize a lot of that stuff. But I feel like they kitchen synced the industry into this movie, and it kind of showed like when Tony Todd shows up, or Kane Hodder shows up, they're clearly just bit characters thrown in there, and uh, they're that, that one lady, she shows up. I was like, this is just kind of obvious pandering to me. <laughs> but I don't mind. <laughs> Last thoughts? Yeah, yeah, Wishmaster. Good movie. Go see it. <laughs> All right, folks, thanks for joining us for Wes Craven Week. Thanks for joining us for Modern Horrors 31 Days of Halloween. Wes Craven Week is now over. Next week, we begin the fucking weird barrage with some really fucked up shit. If you're interested in seeing that, subscribe below, follow us on Twitter. Otherwise, cheers. See you later. Spooky, scary skeletons Speak with such a screech You'll shake and shudder in surprise when you